Hey, welcome everybody to an updated version of the Gfira Docker Desktop extension demo. As the last time we're working with the Gfira demos repository, I've already cloned it, but this time we are going to start from a clean cluster, starting from scratch. We did some changes to the UI. We got some feedback from the folks of Docker, which we are super grateful. Shout out at this point. And um, yeah, let's dive right in. So we got the Jifara demos repository. And I already cloned it here. And we're working with the KCD Munich demo. So first thing we are going to do, we check the state of the cluster. There's nothing special in here. And we are going to apply some workloads we prepared. Do that. And we see we have two pods created and two services. Pods are creating. Probably takes a moment. We go, the back end is running, the front end is running, and there should be also like services. We got one which is exposed to perfect. Here we go. So it's uh, probably not very readable. It says hello world. We got front end pod uh, uh, running in the cluster, exposed to the host system to port 80. Let's just have a look at the code to see what is going on here. All right, here we are. So we just applied the uh, YAML file. This one here, the demo YAML, uh, it contains two pods, the front end, the back end pod, which are just basic Python applications doing nothing really special. I will show you in a moment. We got the backend pod, which is exposed internally as a service, and the frontend pod, which is exposed as a local answer on port 80 to the outside world. So let's head to the backend. Um, nothing really special here. It exposes a route, a color, which returns a JSON with a color blue. And we got the frontend application. So the frontend Flask app also does nothing really special. It picks up an environment variable service URL uh, and calls the color route on it. It will be our backend pod, right? It extracts the color from the JSON it retrieved and puts it in a paragraph with background color and it says hello world. Basically, that's what we're seeing here. It's hardly readable, I admit that, but that's that's what we have here. Okay. Um, so this is the basic setup. Just to remember what we're trying to do here. So we got the Kubernetes cluster with our front end pod with a back end pod. We got the load balancer, which exposes the service to the outside. And we want to start another container, which loads our code from our hard drive and connects to the back end service within the cluster. Let's try this. What we want to do is we want to work on our front end application, but we want to leverage the back end application which runs in the cluster, but it's not exposed to the outside world. And this is what we use the Gfira Docker Desktop extension for. So let's head right into Docker Desktop. By the way, we're using the Kubernetes which is running within Docker Desktop, right? So let's install the Gfira Docker Desktop extension through the marketplace. This may take a moment. All right, we can see the installation process here. And the Gfira extension was successfully installed. Great. Let's head right in. So we made some changes to the UI. Right now we're starting with an overview of the running containers. Since we freshly installed Gfira, there's nothing really new here. You can display the Gfira cargo containers if you want to. By default, they're not shown. Um, the Gfira cargo containers basically are a proxy to the cluster. 
So usually you don't really care about them, but in some special cases you might be interested. Okay, I already chose my cube config, uh, the context from the cube config. We extract the contexts that are available in the cube configuration. Um, however, right now we're working with Docker Desktop. Everything is set here, which is nice. You could also work with remote clusters, no problem. And let's go to the next step. We are working with a default namespace. I already tried this before, right? Um, so everything is pre-filled, but of course, like you can change any of the parameters here. Do you remember when we walked through the code, the front end service is working with an environment variable, and I want to copy the environment variables from the front end pod, just so I have the same conditions, the same environment variables available within my container. I'm using the same image. It's already chosen. I just download it. Uh, and I'm overwriting the command because I want to work with this debug flag. Flask allows me to basically do hot code reloading with this flag. And I want to use this since I am mounting my code into the container. Also, I want to expose port 5003 to the outside. Since the app is running on that port, I just like map it to the port on the host. And this should be it. Let's go. So right now we're checking whether Gfira has been in the cluster has been installed in the cluster. It has been installed uh, already, otherwise it takes a bit more time. And the Container is started now. We are redirected to the native Docker desktop log view. We can inspect the container and we see service URL is set. It's set to the domain of the backend service within Kubernetes, right? We also have the other environment variables from Kubernetes available here. So it's really, really close to what we have actually have uh, running as a pod in the cluster. We also can just like work within this uh, container. Of course, you also can use your favorite terminal or shell. This is just an example. And let's see, we should see the same application on port 5003. Amazing. Now we want to work on it. Maybe we let's let's just change the color of the font because it's hardly readable, right? So so let's do something like color white. We are real CSS pros here, right? And when we reload, boom, the code is reloaded. My container is talking to the backend service in the cluster, and I can basically change anything and have all the APIs or maybe databases, maybe queues, whatever you have running in your cluster available with this container I just started. And just remember, we're not really forced to use a local Kubernetes here. We can use any remote Kubernetes really. So maybe I don't want this to be a paragraph, rather uh, H1 headline, boom, it's there. and. This is this is pretty much it. Um, when we look into the logs, we see requests are being made. Um, the app was reloaded. We even have a debugger active, so we could connect the debugger from VS Code to the container. This is really neat, and this is what brings development and production closer because we can basically set up a development cluster, which looks like our production cluster, maybe with some anonymized data or database. And yeah, just attach single local containers to the cluster, connect them and work with a kind of same environment. And this is the demo of the updated version of Gfire Docker Desktop. Thank you very much and have a good day.